Welcome, everybody. This is Market Peak with Seth and Matt, and today is Tuesday, February 23rd, and uh, we are ready to rock it out. We're going to be talking about the Tesla sales halt. Also, Shrimp, actually, SHMP did an acquisition. Interestingly enough, AITX also uh, had one of their biggest sales ever. Please hit the subscribe button. Actually, it's over there. Uh, to stay in the news on the trends, the trades, everything that's going on. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're going to have Matt here with his three charts, everyone's favorite segment. So what's up, Matt? How's it going? What's up, Seth? Happy Tuesday. Yeah, happy Tuesday, man. It was it was a rough Tuesday. Ain't going to lie. You know, wasn't the greatest Tuesday, but uh, it's it's okay. At least it, you know, it kind of stabilized a bit. By the way, none of this is this is advice. We are not financial advisor, advisors. Do your own research, uh, you know, consult your professionals, all that. So, all right. Well, we're going to go ahead and start with the portfolio update. That's kind of what we do here. And Hold on really quickly. Before we get into any of that, I have to ask. Sure. Where'd you get that NASA shirt? This. Okay, sure. So uh, our other show, uh, BWS's podcast, because we said so, Alex, who's a reoccurring guest, that's a video show also. We actually get a ton of downloads, audio, not as many watchers. Um, but anyway, so he got, he just got this for me. We do shout outs like every week. I want to shout out this and he shout me out. He's like, dude, you're a smart guy. You know, you're selfless, blah, blah. And hooked me up with his Jersey. That's freaking got my name on it and everything. So what's kind of cool is, uh, in addition to that, I actually was holding on to, they're just here. Cause I had them for when recorded. These are my Paul George, oh. uh, NASA kicks. So it says around here, don't tell me nice. the sky's the limit when there are footprints on the moon. So, and of course, Rad. you know, you got to have it with the little tag and everything as well. So these are cool, man. I love them. Interesting. I don't think I'll ever wear them. Unfortunately, they're supposed to, they're going to stay dead stock. Maybe. So, yeah. and of course you have to have the stock X, flexible. stock X verif verification. Of course they are. 100%. And that's why I'm not going to wear them. In fact, that's the ter first time I've taken them out of the box in over a year. So, yeah, I appreciate you asking, man. Big NASA fans. I mean, NASA just been out there kicking ass. And JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, I mean, you guys do the work to get us there. And then NASA, you know, you guys build the awesome stuff that, that, that gets us the science and everything and the satellites and stuff for sure. So, all right. So, let's jump into the portfolio update here. As you can see, for the year, I'm still up 400%. So it wasn't that long ago. It was up a lot more. Uh, all these options. And we're going to be talking about options this week. And this will, be, this will be very poignant. So we'll see. There's possibility some will come through. I sold space, SPCE, Virgin Galactic. Uh, and the reason why, it just it just seemed kind of dead. seemed like it was going to be losing for quite a bit. Uh, and the reason why I bought QuantumScape is because QuantumScape, and you can see what it, what it did today, QuantumScape. Escape's been doing really, really well. Uh, it's stabilized. If I go back for, actually, I'll go back a year, you'll see it had this big jump. And I actually ended up buying it around like 68. I texted, I think it was over the course of a few days, I was just texting you how crazy the gains were. I sold it around like 121. Haven't touched it since. But about five days ago, uh, there was a big announcement that came out. Uh, and basically what happened is they found a way to do two layers of their technology, which is really important for building the type of batteries that they want to build, which is a solid state battery. In addition to that, billionaire George Soros invested $4.6 billion. So that was on the 17th and it was trading around 57, anywhere from 55 to 57 and it's jumped up to 71. And recently uh, with all that's been going on back down to 57. So back down to where it was before the news. And I thought it'd be a great time to jump in. So that's kind of the reasoning reasoning for that one. So, and I just figured space is going to be stuck. And if you actually go to the candle on this, there's a nice big buy beforehand. It's up about two or 3% uh, in the post. Uh, and I kept Palantir. Um, this is just one of those ones that, that we talked about on the show. Matthew, this is one of your picks. Uh, once again, they had a, a lock on some shares and the lock got released back here, slowly started going down. Actually, it was actually back here, started going down a little bit. Um, and then it's been kind of hovering ever since. Definitely found some support here. We'll see what happens with that. And then Watt. The only reason I'm bringing this one up is because I had mentioned, we had talked about the fact that it's going to drop. Every time it has a major sale, it drops. And sure, or major rise, it dropped. Sure enough, it did. Um, if you take a look here, big jump, dropped. 
And this was all intraday. I sold it right around here, expecting it not to go up. So at its peak, it was up to about, oh no, that's not even its peak. Its peak was back here. It was up to about 750, something like that. I sold it at like 623, bought back in, unfortunately, at like 562. It's not terrible. But as you can see this morning, it dropped down to like 432, ended up settling. It found support in the 480 range. Uh, I expect it to kind of be volatile for the next few days, and then hopefully it stabilizes and moves moves back up. So that's pretty much all I got for uh, for our little charts here for our, for our update on our portfolio. So with that, any any thoughts, any questions before we move into some of our uh, couple of our news stories? No, let's talk about the news. All right. So real quick, Tesla, they basically stopped selling the Y base model. It only had 244 miles of range. It was real, real, rear wheel drive only. Tesla, or Elon Musk came out saying he wasn't a fan of the mileage anyway. He said it doesn't really live up to our standards. And then what they ended up doing today, they released the fact that they're going to raise the price of the uh, Model 3 uh, performance and drop the price of the standard Model 3. So Sounds like they're getting rid of the uh, base Model Y altogether. What do you think? I think this is a sign that sales are... Um, plateauing? Maybe, yeah, plateauing sure. is a nicer way to put it. Uh, I was going to say struggling. But look, sure. we all know the Tesla <laughs> store. We all know that um, they're not profitable one quarter and just barely somehow profitable the next. Um, Trading like one billion times earnings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's just the poster child for this market. Sure. Companies who aren't super profitable, who lack good fundamentals, are getting bought up. Yep. And that's the end of the story there. Sure. Tesla purchasing Bitcoin also kind of tells me that maybe they're trying to uh, generate yield from that because their sales, their car sales are flagging. Yeah. But that is just, you know, my own opinion. We'll see how their numbers look. Well, an issue that's coming they're out. They're selling cars. They're selling cars, you know, yeah. They're, they're selling cars, but, you know, you'd have to imagine with all the work that goes into it, even with their Gigafactory um, and the fact that that's going to enable them to really scale and control price. Sure. Even with all that. These cars have to be expensive to build. They they're not cheap. Um, I know thirty five thousand bucks. Sure. Um, that's that's an investment. Yeah. You know, it's so, been going down. I mean, it's 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 been doing great, and then all of a sudden it just plummeted along with everything else. So it'll be interesting to see if it stabilizes. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. I mean, uh, yes, it will. But I mean, that's that's funny. But I mean. If it stabilizes here or if it keeps dropping, I think the fact that they're deciding, you know what, screw that. They're the Y, the base model Y is still available off the menu, as Elon Musk put it. So if you, if you want to get it, you can. But if they're getting rid of a, a car that's not selling, I can only strengthen the company in the long term, I feel. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, next thing we're going to move to in shrimp. So, natural shrimp, SHMP, it's one of our stock picks. Um, I have 10,000 shares, huge fan of it. We talked about it. You can go find the episode. I think it was the five reasons you're losing money episode. We talked about shrimp at the same time. But anyway, it developed this technology that essentially allows you to or allows them to grow shrimp without chemicals, without any types of issues with bacteria, just much more natural way. And they partnered with a company uh, called, where is it here? Hydrenesis Aquaculture, and they just announced today that they are buying uh, out Hydrenesis Aquaculture. They're going to give for $12.5 million. They're giving $5.5 million in cash. The rest is going to be in stock, which says a lot about what's going on because the fact that they're willing to accept that much in stock, they know it's only going to go up. So it's a pretty cool thing, man, the fact that they're doing this. Another acquisition, that means they're going to whole own all of it by themselves. And it's only going to strengthen th th things for him. Did, yeah. did you know that? That's interesting. It's pretty cool. I'm really interested in the stock. Yeah. Yeah. Like I bought more today. I bought a thousand more shares today. It's been hovering in the 60s, you know, low to mid 60s. It seems to have found some support. Uh, I figured it probably would have ended up going uh, up today if everything wasn't so down. And if we look at today's, actually, I'll, give, I'll bring up the five day. 
So once again, the five day has been pretty steady, anywhere from 65 to 40 cents at one point. For those of you who haven't been following it, it was up to 85 cents at one point. Um, but I just think the long term benefits of this stock, the fact that they're acquiring this gives them all that they own 50.1 percent. Now they own it all. The technology, the company that actually, you know, started with them. I just think it's a positive thing. So and this acquisition is supposed to finish this year as well. So, and, and last thing, Robotics uh, Assistance Device announces uh, AITX, uh, large expansion over order received from Fortune 500 client, says Fortune 50 client eventually. They're a logistics company that bought them, and the end uh, client that's gonna, that is servicing, uh, the logistics company is servicing is a, top, is a Fortune 50 client in the world, so I guess they're a client. But either way, it's pretty cool. I mean, they got an order for nine of the devices, um, you know, it's the only thing that's, and it's funny cause my friend Steve, who turned me on to the stock. The one thing he said was it just, sometimes it feels like, like a, an eighth grader is running some of their PR. One of the releases, this particular client has several additional rad units deployed throughout the country with dozens of additional units under contemplation. It's like contemplation, like really, like maybe under consideration, it just, just seems a little odd for me that they would use, oh, they're thinking about it, as opposed to, yeah, they're actually entertaining the idea. Small things, um, but it's still, it's a good thing. They got their biggest order ever, and all of these orders require subscriptions, so it's it's pretty awesome, man. So if we look at the five-day for AITX, uh, you can see it, at one point it was 24 cents. At one point today, it dropped it, dropped down to like nine cents, eight cents, and it actually finished positive for the day. Uh, and I think a lot of that had to do with the news. So hopefully that one stabilizes. Comparing SHMP and AITX, SHMP hasn't even started working with their technology They're right around the corner. AITX already has some of their stuff out. So between the two, I feel like SHMP, Natural Shrimp, definitely has a little bit more trajectory going for them. But this company, AITX, it's really inexpensive. It might be worth it just to you know grab a chunk of shares and see what happens. And that's what's up, man. Yeah. So was there anything you wanted to, to add for news? Anything you had? Yeah, so obviously um, Federal Reserve Chairman Jay Powell is testifying um, today and tomorrow. 99% of market watchers anticipate him to just kind of reinforce the same guidance, keep interest rates low for long. I don't think he'll be delivering any surprises. And if he does, definitely expect some sort of reaction from the market. Sure. Um, we'll see what he says about the current state of the economy, because at one point, right, we're going to be good enough to handle an interest rate increase. Yeah. And that, which, and I think that comes far down the line. I it's think been that's low for definitely so a year from now, at, at least. Yeah. It's, it's been a long time since, uh, what? 2018. I mean, if you can, uh, I mean, 2017. it's been, it, it never really got to where it was before 2009 or 2018. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we, then we had the, the crash and yeah. they had to um, introduce quantitative easing, bring sure. rates down to zero and that eased up lending conditions. They're doing the same thing now, except to a greater degree. And we'll see how this plays out. Sure. Uh, there are a lot of pessimists who I won't call them pessimists, but there are a lot of people who look at the technicals, of the market, look at the fundamentals of some of these companies that have risen really fast, really high, and say, well, we have to have a crash. Sure. Guys, this is insanity. Eventually, the market is going to have to discover price the right way, and it's all going to come crashing down. But I've been saying that for a long time. Yeah. And what I have to say is, if you look at what's happening, the Federal Reserve is just dumping liquidity into the market or working alongside people like BlackRock, private equity firms, to keep the market basically levitated. Um, and if you think about it, the Federal Reserve hasn't even really reached deep, deep into its bag of goodies yet and gone with a nuclear option, which is what? Negative rates. Sure, sure. And the big news story of this year is whether or not another market crash um, kind of pushes them towards that. Sure. Right. So that's the Federal Reserve story. So the other news story, obviously, is Brazil. They saw a pretty sizable market correction um, brought about by um, President Bolsonaro firing uh, one of the chief executives of their state-owned oil company, Petrobras. Sure. 
That's a big deal because Bolsonaro was supposed to be this free market president. And instead, now he is taking direct control in the financial decisions of some of these large companies. And that's a problem. The stock market reacted neg negatively. The Brazilian real currency took a dive. The U.S. dollar kind of started to stabilize a little bit. And we'll see how this plays out. He's been uh, an issue with market. COVID as well because he just refused to accept. Oh yeah, yeah, he got he yeah. got killed. Yeah. he he tried to paper over it, and then he and, then he caught um, it just like you know he's unpopular. Yeah, for sure, he's very unpopular. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. We'll, we'll see how this plays out. We'll see what it means for the dollar. Sure. Is there any way yeah, like if, as other like if yeah, we're as, here as other emerging market currencies, especially from some of these BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, as their currencies start to go lower, that's bullish for the dollar and negative for these international multinational stocks would you ever trade on the dollar. would you ever consider investing in foreign currency that's dipping like this you know i mean is it ever like that's a good question it? i've never really thought about it so forex is an interesting market for some people it doesn't deliver that price action sure um needed for you know like these big trades at the same time i think we're in an interesting place for right now you have the dollar against a basket of other foreign currencies weak it just looks weak yeah um we're about to test support and we'll see if the dollar keeps heading lower stocks will head higher um sorry if i went on a tangent there it's all right it's all good yeah. all right well uh, any any other last minute thoughts before we go into our top five of the week yeah. all right cool all right, so let's move into top five option tips for beginners, and we'll go ahead and start off. The first one, start small. Don't spend a lot of money. Don't get a lot of contracts. You know, Don't have too many contracts at once. I feel like it's a good place to, to start with these tips for sure. Yeah, I definitely agree with that one. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, if you're chasing profit, take a step back, downsize your position, and see what happens. Sure. So number two, buy in the money strike prices. So in other words, buy stuff where if the stock doesn't move too much, you still actually you know get a profit. Yeah, and you also want to make sure that your strike price, particularly on shorted dated options, isn't too far out of the money, right? Now, a contract that costs two dollars um, or two cents per share might seem attractive. It might seem cost effective because you're thinking, well, wait, if if this stock goes up 100%. I'm going to make bank. It's cheap for a reason. Yeah. These contracts are cheap for a reason. Um, they're going to express high implied volatility. In the money strike prices, however, tend to, generally speaking, express much lower, much more manageable, less risky implied volatility sure. numbers. So basically what that means is if, say, you're trading Apple and you purchase a call option for a strike price, maybe right under where the price is currently. So say the price is 230 and your strike price is like 225, right? The volatility on that trade is going to be subdued because chances are Apple, by the time this contract expires, right, will have gone up or maybe not gone down to your strike price. Sure. Right now, there's no guarantees in the market, obviously, but with this market right now, you want in the money strike prices, um, particularly if you're going long. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if, if you're going long, for sure. Number three, buy longer dated contracts. Don't buy contracts that expire next week or two <laughs> weeks or three weeks. You know, you can buy them pretty far out. They cost more, but it's a lot less risk and a lot more potential to, to really do well if the stock keeps going up or down, depending on how you, you put your money. Yeah, again, you want to give yourself some time to reach that strike price um, because there's also theta decay. So the longer your contracts are active, right, the less money you're going to make inherently. Think about that. So some advice would be to, if you're up, say, decently on that strike price, just sell and buy a new contract because you've already lost money on theta decay. Yeah. It's good right. advice. And the longer dated your contracts are, again, the less implied volatility you have to, you know, um, put at play. So basically what that means is if your contract expires in a week, right, you don't have a lot of time, that trade is going to be volatile because you don't have, a, again, your time frame for making that type of that strike price is very small. 
But if you have, if you give yourself two months or even a month, right, the pricing mechanism that determines how much that contract is worth, right, is going to realize that you have a much better shot of making that strike price if you have more time. Sure. Right? It's common sense. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right. So number four, stay clear of high implied volatility trades. So you were just talking about implied volatility. Obviously, the higher the volatility, the much more risky the trade is, but also more profit you can make. That's for sure. You so I got into, this is a good story. I got into Tesla um, way back before the COVID crash. And there had been some pretty crazy price action got me excited. I got in, I bought some calls and well, I bought one call and one put, they were quite expensive. And I got blown out of both those contracts because never moved. Um, instead of over the next couple of weeks, Tesla bouncing like it had been in a wide range, it did nothing. The price action just flatlined and the implied volatility, right? The premium, the interest in those contracts just plummeted and their value just got shot to death. That's what happens. So implied volatility is basically like the expectation of uh, where price is going to be, either to the upside or to the downside. Right? Sure. So if implied volatility is say 400% on your micro cap option, what that means is that the market is anticipating a 400% move, right, within the time frame of that contract. Problem is if say a week goes by and it's a month long contract and there's no price action, right? You just kind of trade in this compressed range, right? That implied volatility is gonna go way down and that contract is gonna lose a lot. Basic advice, some basic advice is buy in the money strike prices, buy long dated contracts because inherently those are gonna have lower implied volatility. And what you want to do is you want to get in when implied volatility is low and, and, and then you want to benefit from that expansion, from that jump in implied and the volatility. And the Go volatility is more expensive too. Those contracts cost more. So, I mean, there's mm -hmm. all kinds of, uh All right, so number five, avoid selling options, which is something I've never even considered, but you can, you can yeah. really get, so please, I don't even know how to speak to so, this. So, the benefit of purchasing options is that you can only lose what you put in. If you sell options, the tables will turn. Um, you can get assigned. You can, especially if you're margin, you can lose a lot of money. Selling options should always be a part of any option trader's advanced strategy because you can hedge yourself and you can take advantage of the market trend in ways you can't when you're purchasing options. Because remember, options in large part are being sold by people who have inside information and know a lot about the market and have a lot of money. Sure. Right. So inherently, it's a risk. You're at a disadvantage. Right. However, when you sell options, right, you can be in the other camp, right, and you can really take advantage of any directional trade. So yeah, avoid selling options. Until you at least master um, a regular option. I mean, is that safe yeah. to say? Then maybe Yeah, you and can... if you do sell an option um, and you are looking to collect that premium, hedge that trade by buying shares. Sure. Because you don't want it to go higher. And if it does, you have those shares, yeah. right? So maybe you've offset your losses. That's kind of how it works. It gets complicated. Bottom line is selling options is good until the trade goes the other way, then you can lose a massive amount of money. Sure. So you, all right. you can go into the negative really quick. And the last one we have is just don't use options to recoup losses, uh, you know, to chase profits and all that. It's it's really a a financial strategy to to expand your current investing prowess, I guess. It's really not for, you know, moonshotting or any of that crap. Yeah. 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 And look, we all like to gamble a little bit. We all have hopes and dreams. That's why we do we it. all take a look at is out of the money, short dated weekly uh, contracts and think, I'll buy a few of these. What's the risk? And, you know, there might not be any harm, but when you first start trading options, it's very hard to resist the temptation of what you deem to be free money. Sure. And, you know, just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> So, and something to remember when you're buying options, you know, you're not buying the stock. So 
if you expect it to go up and it doesn't, you don't even have like a stock that just sat there and did nothing. Same thing on the way, way down. You expect it to go down. It doesn't, you don't have the stock. So you got to understand that too. Like at least when you buy the stock and it doesn't go the way you want, at least you still have some stock left. All right. So I guess we'll move into everyone's favorite segment, three charts with Matt. And we're going to go ahead and start like we always do with the VIX, which bounced with a little bit, VIX. just like you said. So we got the VIX yeah, so, here. Go ahead. So uh, over the weekend, I said either one of two things will happen. Either we'll get a slight bounce from that support band um, and then head lower over the next few weeks heading into the March options expiration, or we'll just actually get a bounce. And it looks like we got a small bounce. We are again just above that support band, and we that bounce did get crushed a little bit today. Sure. Although I, I think the VIX, I think a lot of the VIX ET uh, ETBs are up after hours, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. Sure. We're we're in an interesting position right now. I did we close above twenty three. We're twenty three point one one. 23.11 right now. Okay, so the 23 level is a critical level. Um, if we keep, I did say that if we start closing daily candles above that level, something else is happening. I'd watch out for some sort of like more sizable correction. At the same time, I can't help but look at that, you know, five year chart and think that, or even the one year chart. Let's look at the one year chart. I think we're set up to head lower. And I, th I think we're just going to slowly grind lower. Even look, even if the VIX does go up 30%, um, we, we get like a real good uh, reactionary bounce um, from kind of like hitting that support band uh, a few times. If the VIX goes up, the market goes down, it'll be short lived. Sure. Be short There's just too many positive things happening in the world and our country, like for it to stay down for very long. Yeah. And I mean, it's within a lot of money managers best interest to suppress the VIX. Yeah. You know, like a lot of these funds are just long. A lot of them are just buying shares and they look at the VIX and they say, all right, you know, um, it'd be great if I could tell my clients that I advise them correctly. Um, when I told them to stay in the market last time we took a 10% dip. Sure. You know, so there, there's, there are like a lot of different mechanics at play right now. Bottom line is, um, it's better for everyone involved if the market continues to grind higher. I don't care what you have to say about fundamentals. I don't care what your complaints are as far as the um, technical soundness of how we're trading right now. Look at the screen in front of you. Look at the trend. It's there. Trend is your friend until it's not. 100%. We'll save your predictions uh, for, for the end. HYG. All right. HYG. So high yield. Uh, is an interesting space. Um, it has been skyrocketing. And high yield debt, for those of you who don't know, basically refers to uh, debt um, issued by companies who have a hard time issuing debt, who have a hard time finding buyers. Uh, there's something screwed up with their business model. They were negatively impacted by COVID. They just aren't well-liked companies for whatever reason. It's harder for them to borrow money to finance their operations. It's harder for them to sell debt cheaply. You had the Federal Reserve come in about a year ago and pledge to backstop high yield debt, basically prevent it from sliding and prevent, you know, thousands and thousands of, you know, mostly domestic small businesses from going out of um, business. Sure. And so what the market did what investors did is said wait a second okay so let's take a look at high yield debt where no one is no one's looking at that right now we just had a huge crash yep and let's jump in and ride this thing because there's there are no sellers they're all gone everyone's sold already sure. so we're just going to buy and it's just been a buyer's market uh, we've seen incredible price action the Russell 2000 is outperforming to outperforming to the upside again um, across all the indices again, and you just you know a year ago you wouldn't think about it. A year ago you would say, "Man, the Russell is dead. These small caps are dead. These companies suck. They're going out of business completely." Uh, the Federal Reserve comes in, says you know makes some remarks. They don't even actually purchase um, any of these high yield uh, ETFs, and the, the market takes the signal and just. We fly. Sure. It's it's 
insane. Um, so I'm looking at this chart, looking at the five year view, um, because I just want to show you basically how out the window fundamentals have become for some of these companies. And it's pretty like I flat, think, except for the big crash back in March. It's fairly been, you know, fairly yeah, flat. Yeah. And and the fact that we're at where we were before the crash yep. is just insanity. You know, we'll, we'll see where this goes. I expect it um, to keep going. That's for sure. And I'm going to say a similar thing about the IYT, yep. uh, the transports ETF. So transports talking about UPS, FedEx, people like those. Um Transport transportation companies tend to be leading indicators of an economic recovery, right? If you have um, velocity, right, across your economy, if you have um, a rapid flow of goods and services, then you're probably going to do okay. The transportation index kind of reflects that, sure. right? If people are buying things, shipping things, that's good. Um, if the economy is liquid, that's good. So there are a lot of different um, conclusions you can pull by looking at uh, transportation's ETF. The question is, and again, if you, does shipping go down once things start to open up and people can go to stores more and people are going to do their own shopping more and less stuff is, you know, I, I wonder. I mean, what do you what do you think? I feel like it's going to probably that's, that's a good point. there's a good there's a good oper- chance for it to start leveling off maybe. Uh, you know, I mean, but but at the same time, a lot of stuff's changed. Like we were talking about the real estate uh, before, like commercial real estate. There's like a lot of opening up and stuff in previous episode, whatever. And it's really, are offices going to open back up? Or are people still going to work from home? I know I'm going to continue to shop mostly on Amazon like I have. So for me, it's not going to make much of a difference. But, you know, like people like Best Buy and, you know, people that normally would go to a department store that aren't anymore, will they go back or will they stay at home? Because that could definitely have an impact. Yeah. Well, they just order offline. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, what will that do to suppliers? What will that do to brick and mortar, you know, retail outlets? Sure. sure. But I mean, so far, I mean, look, brick and mortar retail has been dying for the past 10 years, right? Yeah. I mean, you're getting, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we're looking at 15,000 store closures over the next year. I believe it. Easily. I believe it. And that's going to continue year after year. That means more shipping. Yeah, yeah, but but the money's going to go somewhere. That's the point. The money's going to go somewhere, and if you're invested somewhat prudently, you're going to benefit. Sure, right. Sure. So, all right. So uh, while we wrap things up, your prediction. So I'll I'll go ahead and start. Watt. I expect Watt to be pretty volatile for the next week or so. Then it'll stabilize. AATX. I expect that to just stabilize. Uh, and QuantumScape QS. I expect that to. I expect that to go up from where we are right now. So that's pretty much all I got. What about you? VIX, so up or down? I think I think the VIX, we'll see what happens tomorrow. If we close another daily candle below that 23, or above that 23 level, sure. excuse me, I'm thinking, are you playing uh, Come on, man. that game? No. What's that game called? Pong. Pong. Yeah, I Pong. made this. I make most of my sound effects. Go ahead, VIX, up or down? Okay. Up, down. Okay, so VIX, I'm thinking... <laughs> Oh, I think we're going to get, we're going to head up before we head down. Oh. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's all we want to hear. Okay. That's fine. Over the next week. Any other um, predictions? But I mean, other predictions, I'm taking a look. I know we said that small caps were set for a rally. Sure. And, um, you know, it, it looks Sooner like we're later. just kind of chopping around. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I said, I think I use the term if they're going to chop higher. And by that, I mean, they're going to go up and down sure, sure, sure. along like a, 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 an, a slight uptrend. Sure. And craggy I think that's going to be the case. Yeah. I think it'll be craggy for a little bit. I think we need to wait for that. There's IV on those options to kind of cool off. I think we need to get people out of that space a little bit. Um, shake out some of those weekends, but I I'm absolutely confident that we're going to see another micro cap rally that will probably dwarf the previous one. It's just not going to happen uh, when we all want. Sure. All right. So what, uh, what are you excited about? I'm really excited about natural shrimp. Yeah. And I'm really excited about AITS. Sure. I'm excited about Um, natural shrimp for sure. And Watts earnings are coming up. That's going to be very, very interesting. That's for sure. When are Watts earnings again? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Let me see here. All right. So if we look here, earnings, February 25th, it is the 23rd. 
So yeah, February 25th. So Thursday. So what? Energist, whatever earnings on Thursday. So let's let's <laughs> let's hope let's hope it goes well. Cause if not, it's gonna go down. It's not gonna go down too far, but it'll go down. Cause they they've been, they haven't had really they haven't really made money. They don't beat estimates very often. So we'll see. All right. Well, I guess that's pretty much all we got. Any any last minute thoughts? No. No. Um, again, love the shirt. Yeah, man. I'm not gonna wear it much, and I'll never get to wear it with the sneakers. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Sacrifices. So maybe we'll get a second pair for wearing. We'll see. But yeah, dude, this thing. So I love it. All right, you don't need to show it off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we'll see you that guys. Has your name on it. That's nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. I gotta say, he really, really hooked it up. It is cool. So, I like NASA. Yeah, I like NASA related things. All right, so uh, we'll see you guys in a few days. Boom. <laughs>